Hello, my dear friends from the Co-Cathedral. We begin, as we do, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. So, here we are in the cemetery, and I'm sitting next to uh, Steve Flynn, who is the director, and in a moment, I'm going to engage uh, in a conversation with him. But just to give a little history, uh, <clears throat> our parish, as you know, the Co-Cathedral, was started in 1863. And so this was the St. John's Cemetery, because it was the only parish in town. And it was the only parish for almost 75 years. In 1937, St. Francis of Assisi began. So then it changed from St. John's Cemetery to a broader sense of a Calvary Cemetery of Rochester. So there's a lot of history resting in this acreage. And uh, we're going to invite uh, Steve because he's relatively new if you think of the age of the cemetery. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, he's just doing an exceptional work for us in leadership and in so many ways. So <clears throat> we're extremely grateful. There is a board and there are six pastors and <clears throat> excuse me and uh, six lay people. So there's 12 and then Steve is the director so he really carries the ball for us. So Steve Give me a little idea about your experience so far. Uh, it, it's been a, a remarkable experience. Uh, you never know what each day is going to bring, uh, whether you get a call from a funeral home or a family pre-planning, but uh, every day is different and, and you're working with people that uh, uh, sometimes that are grieving and sometimes just kind of planning to make it easy for their families. So uh, that's kind of the, everything is different. Every day is a change. No, when I think about, you know, my own uh, parents are buried here, and grandparents, because this is my home town. But uh, what I appreciate, uh, Steve, is all of the relationships that you deal with, yeah, with people at a tender time, you know, with grief and the complexity of life. Yeah, we, we have to care for, the, uh, care for the dead, for the families, so that they find comfort, and, and we have to continue, you know, have our spiritual pray for the living and the dead and, yeah. and it's a beautiful place to do it we have many people come out here every single day mm. and and share time with their loved ones that are here and uh, we uh, were open seven days a week for people to, to visit here and and enjoy the splendor of the Calvary Cemetery. One of the things that like any uh, enterprise you know we're always looking at uh, what we need to do for a future full of hope. And Steve has been involved in some recent updates that make our cemetery much more uh, attractive for the engagement of people and also uh, some things that needed to be changed. So you want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, the one big one that we're doing is we're adding a directory to the cemetery uh, so that people can stop at the uh, maintenance area there and look in a, a book and find where distant relatives are, are doing genealogy work and find where their uh, family members are located. Uh, we have nearly 10,000 souls resting on these grounds wow. and, and so that's a lot of space to try to cover. It's easier if you, if you know where you're going. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's one of the big things that we're almost finished with. We also have, uh, over the years, acquired some land, some houses to the east of the cemetery, and we're in the process of doing some excavation work and leveling and, and getting that ready for the future. So someday we'll have another uh, three, three and a half acres that we'll be able to use for cemetery use. Another thing with, with that expansion that Steve refers to, you know, the diocese owns some property out on 75th Street. Um, and so we are looking um, at the possibility of maybe purchasing some of that property. We are, that's in the very beginning stages of conversation with the board. And, um, and Steve is you know, working on that very slowly. But what would that look like if we can open that up? Uh, really, the possibilities are endless and, and the cemetery business as is kind of changing uh, we've gone from just a few cremations a year to now this year I think we're going to be at 
I would estimate 65% of our internments will be cremations. So with new property or new expansion, I think we will be looking at more of the cremation garden areas, more columbariums, more uh, spaces that are suitable to what people are, are, are using. Sure. So uh, it may not be as many big headstones and footstones, but uh, more of garden areas. Sure. No, and that's not to send any alarm to anyone. Of course, we're going to maintain this cemetery and we have enough space here for years and years and years. I don't even know if we have that figured out. But. Uh, well, the estimates always change, but we have probably 1,500 spaces that are sold that nobody's buried in. Sure. And so that would take us 15 years just to, to use that up. And, and with the cremations, we can probably double that easy. So. so that's why when we, like everyone who does planning and looking at the future that's why we just talk about that possibility with an awareness that a lot of work has to be done and study but you need you, you need to find your place uh, because you can't just do it at the last minute and the way rochester continues to grow and develop we need to pay attention and and i think it's a great opportunity out there it's a beautiful piece of land if the soil works and all the uh, engineering things it could be a real nice addition in a nice second cemetery for our you know, Catholic communities. Steve also has an excellent uh, employee, has different employees, of course, in the summer for the uh, lawn mowing and that kind of thing, but Alex is here, and what does Alex do? Alex is our full-time sexton, and somebody always, you know, if they ask what a sexton does, I say they do everything. Yeah. Uh, and really, he, he works with the people out here, he hires the summer staff, uh, opens and, and closes the grave sites, uh, trims the trees, mows the lawn, supervises all the maintenance, the water lines. Uh, it's a, a jack of all trades and he really does an outstanding job. And, and the staff that he hires, you know, they work so well together and uh, I continually get praises on, on how well the cemetery looks and, and how beautiful it's kept. And, uh, that's really a tribute to our staff, Alex, and the, and the crew we have. You know, when initially when we had cremains, I can remember when I was first ordained a priest, it would only be that cremains would go on, on top of a, an existing grave, possibly. But now we have a columbarium. And, uh, you know, that is a very uh, attractive way for cremains. Yeah, it's uh, ours is four granite walls above ground. and. 40 doors on the inside and 40 on the outside, and we're about half full. We've filled about half the spaces now, so uh, it was a big step for the board back when they decided, but uh, it was a smart decision and it's really yeah. going well. No, and we also, of course, have in the plan that we, we have to expand the columbarium so that there won't be any limitation on that ultimately. It's just that we have to do that according to need. So my dear friends, I'm so conscious that earlier Steve mentioned, you know, the 10,000 uh, souls that have found their resting place here in this uh, beautiful cemetery. And uh, Steve was mentioning there's so many people that stop out uh, to pray and to be mindful and to remember their loved ones. And uh, that's something that we don't want to forget. Obviously, uh, Memorial Day, Steve, was a big uh, attraction. Always a big day, and we, we set out flags and uh, the bronze markers, the stars for all the veterans, and we have volunteers that come out and help with that. Uh, the flowers that people bring out at that time of year, it's spectacular, and it's always so beautifully decorated. Yeah. So we're sitting under, uh, Steve said, these are the two oldest uh, uh, trees so, so this was a nice place to find a little shade because it's about 90 degrees I think today I'm not sure but it's, you did pick a hot day yeah it's right up there but uh, so and he was saying he doesn't even know how old these are maybe practically from the beginning of the cemetery so what we can do is conclude with a little prayer God of love we're mindful of the gift of life and life eternal so we thank God for all of the families and people and parishioners and veterans and the people that are buried here. Also, all the small babies that are remembered and our Franciscan sisters 
uh, have a major part of this cemetery, as well as uh, there's a section for priests and, you know, so many ways. And we bring all of them to you, Lord, so mindful that you offer the promise of going and preparing a dwelling place for us. And we believe that, and we can rejoice in the fact of finding our eternal home with you and our resting place here in Calvary Cemetery. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Come out and visit the cemetery. Come on out and pray for everybody here, even if you don't have family. It's a, it's a very beautiful way to kind of confront reality and our, our own uh, fragility on the path of life. Continue to enjoy the beautiful summer.